Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Luke Cunningham. I'm happy to be posting again, and especially about this project because I'm very excited about this project. Um, I'm really passionate about this, what I've been working on, uh, and I hope that you can stay for the majority of the talk. Uh, I'm going to be showing some really cool footage and some really cool details about this machine. Uh, I think that if you already clicked on this video, uh, you may already just want to get involved, so you might just want to stay for to see what I have to say about it. Um, but number one, this is Project OpenFuse. This is the OpenFuse V0 right here. Uh, I say V0, it's kind of the prototype version that I've been working off of. Uh, and it is functioning. Uh, I wouldn't say it's fully functioning because I think I've only scratched the surface of what this machine can do. But uh, in the future, once there's a community around this who have some good ideas, some good materials uh, to, to implement into this machine, I, I would say it's fully functioning. But right now it's just functioning. So I've actually been working on this for, for over a year now, or almost a year now, and have uh, put a lot of time and thought into this machine. And I think I'm really happy with it as a foundation for the project. Um, so I'll just show you right now some of the prints that I've done on this. Right here, this is actually sucrose table sugar. It's what you'd have in your kitchen. Uh, this is the bottom side. This is the top side. I printed it vertically. Uh, absolutely no supports. Uh, this was actually pretty coarse mat uh, materials and pretty rough settings that I used on this because of that grain size. But uh, again, this is the bottom layer. This is the top layer on this. Again, no supports at all. This is just normal sugar. Um, and this one is my favorite model right here. This is a diamond lattice. Uh, this you might recognize from Andreas Bastian's project, the Open SLS project. Uh, but this right here is a really cool, intricate model. Uh, it shows off the fact that you know an FDM printer really couldn't make this. Um, because of the overhangs, because of how complex it is. Uh, and this again, no supports. And that's again with coarse grain sugar. So these are not nearly at the top of the capabilities of this machine. Um, some of those grain sizes were actually over a millimeter large. Um, and again, I can, I can tune down that resolution very, very fine. But yeah, uh, to talk a little bit about SLS, I'll just say some quick things about SLS for those of you who don't know it. Uh, Number one, you don't have to use any supports. You can totally make a free form object in your build chamber without having any type of supporting material uh, because the powder itself is the supporting material. And when you're done with the powder, um, you, you know, when you're done with the print, you just sift the powder away uh, and then it leaves you with a fully dense object like this one. Um, there's no forces to worry about. You don't have to worry about gravity. You don't have to worry about tension forces with SLA printing. Um, totally free form, no forces. No supports. Um, another little tangent that I'll mention is that you can get you can get some very high precision parts off of SLS uh, machines uh, that actually rival SLA printing. Uh, I'll throw some pictures up with that, uh, and then after that, I'll throw up some pictures of kind of this machine, some of the parts for that while I talk over it. Um, but yeah, the, the second thing that you mainly gain is a access to a variety of new materials. Uh, possibly even more than we would have access to with FDM printing. Because right now, um, well, anyone, anyone who would, have, would know the physics of, of making filament out of PLA versus ABS material would know that there is differences. And it, it's more difficult to make something like PLA than it is ABS. Uh, so filament making is actually a pretty finely controlled, uh, difficult to do process. So you can imagine some of the difficulty in making more exotic materials uh, something like peak material would be hard to extrude just because of its high temperature. Um, other materials like that, but, but then it's something even more exotic, something like sugar or wax. You can't really make filaments out of, and you can't really extrude them properly out of a filament-based machine, uh, let alone trying to support something like, uh, you know, use support material with something like sugar or wax. Uh, so I, I believe, I have a strong intuition that there would be a, a lot of materials that we could use on SLS that we can't use on FDM. Uh, and, and also keep in mind that a variety of the plastic that we have uh, used in FDM actually came after the patents on, on the you know, fused filament or fused uh, deposition modeling actually ran out, Stratasys owned. And after that, we gained you know, the dozens or hundreds of plastics that we can use with FDM today. I think that the same boom may happen if the community embraces some type of SLS 3D printer that's low cost enough for a lot of people to have 
and makes pursuing you know, material engineering for this machine worth it. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited personally to, to be able to test and make more interesting powders like this. I think sugar is a really exciting material, not just because it's edible, <laughs> but because it's dissolvable in water, it's cheap, you can make it, you can vary the fineness very easily in a blender, um, and, and all sorts of things like that makes it worthwhile using for testing. Uh, but I'm really excited. A PLA has shown really good promise, pa uh, powdered PLA. Um, nylon is, is an obvious candidate for this. Uh, and PCL is a kind of an early rep wrap material that people used. It has a very low uh, melting temperature, but actually has some really awesome properties uh, in terms of strength and things like that. It looks like it's a very easily centerable material uh, based on some prior research that I've seen. So, yeah. Uh, very exciting to have that geometric freedom and the materials capabilities for this machine. And I think that the, the geometric freedom can really open up some people's uh, horizons in terms of what they can create in CAD because if you're trying to create something in an FDM machine, you're basically working around all these different parameters you have for overhangs and things like that. And uh, that SLS may just open up, which would be really cool. Uh, but I'll kind of jump into some of the capabilities that this V0 machine has. Uh, right now it's Core XY, and will in the future will be fully metal. I actually have some printed parts on this right now, but I will be making this uh, so they can be laser cut out of metal. Um, I'll be adding actually today or tomorrow some heaters and a new 10 watt tube. Um, the 10 watt tube is actually a cute little tube right here. This will be re replacing the 40 watt tube that I currently have in there right now. Uh, the 40 watt tube is actually just a little bit too powerful uh, for for this machine. It tends to vaporize some things because you can't go uh, low enough on, on the current limit, basically. So the high level of this machine that you need to have in mind is that this is budget oriented. Uh, it, it's gonna be cheaper than anything you can buy right now in the market. Uh, it's gonna be highly capable. That's just gonna come as new materials and improvements are uh, tested and made on this machine. Uh, this is open materials. That's a really big bonus that you gain that you don't have a lot on a lot of other machines. You can throw anything into this as long as you're willing to uh, put the, the time into testing it, basically. Uh, like I said, waxes, sugars, and things like that become open now. Uh, and this is fully open source. I'll have all the documentation for this ready. Uh, when a, a release is made, there'll be a bill of materials that you can follow to build this machine. And things like that. You can modify this machine however you want. If you want to add crazy heat, a crazy heater setup or even a cooling setup, if you want to turn, make this whole thing out of stainless steel so that it would be food safe, you can definitely do that. Um, and I, I would mention that you probably shouldn't be uh, intimidated by the assembly because it's, I, I designed this for assembly actually. It's just a frame with about three sub-assemblies built that you slide into the frame and bolt in, and then you put these aluminum panels over it. Um, so it, it, I, I would say that this is probably about as, as complex as a Voron machine, if you're familiar with that, and it should take about the same time to build one as it, it takes for the Voron. Um, and, and you really gain a lot with this machine that you wouldn't gain with other SLS machines uh, like the Centrit or the Centratech kit uh, because of its openness. It's totally modifiable, hackable, uh, materials are fully open and things like that. So you really, you don't lose much um, or hopefully you won't lose anything and you'll just gain a lot because of its openness. It's not locked down in any way. Future goals uh, it, for me is to make a V1 stable release. That's going to be including making improvements to this. So that's uh, putting in the heaters and the laser, like I mentioned, also infrared heating uh, to heat the top layer of powder, I think is gonna help with um, heating and, you know, again, opening up uh, new materials. Um, this is going to be fully metal parts, like I said. And uh, actually, something exciting is I'm going to be using the Duet board, uh, the Duet line of boards for this. Um, that's gonna be actually, that's actually critical for this because I need to be able to control six axes. Um, but duet boards are well known to be the superior choice for 3D printers anyway, and I'm happy to be moving to that platform. I'm also testing materials and making, yeah, and like I said, making improvements to this machine. So um, I also have a website for this uh, that I've built, and you can, it'll redirect you right now to a place to get the, put on the quick email list, the quick updates email list, and it'll get you to the Discord, it'll get you to the social media links for this, where you can find updates and all, all that good stuff. Uh, in the future, the website will actually act as a central hub for the whole project, which includes a wiki, uh, documentation page, uh, file repository, and possibly even a shop. Uh, that's something that I say with uh, no promises, but I just want to gauge what people would think about that, throw it out there. Uh, if any of you would be interested in buying a fully assembled or a kit-based machine, 
uh, definitely let me know because I would actually like to make that happen. Uh, I just need to know if anybody would be interested in it, in it first. So uh, I would, yeah, I would strongly consider selling this uh, if there was engagement for it. So just to conclude, I'd say that this machine is really exciting because it's working. It's not just uh, theoretical. Um, I've made some real progress on this um, and I'm really happy to actually be able to, to release it soon. Uh, some really cool stuff can happen when I have a community to work alongside. I basically have limited hours and resources that I can personally put into this. Uh, so if I had a dozen or a few dozen people or maybe a hundred people working on this project with me that I can work alongside, that makes me really excited to say, by the way. Um, but if I could have, you know, people that are actually, you know, contributing better ideas than I have, uh, they're just as passionate as I am about this, they're just as excited and interested, that would be awesome. So if you want to join up right now, um, join some of those links, see what's happening. Yeah, if you just want to see what's happening though, uh, you don't have to do anything in this project, just join the Discord and see what progress we end up making on this in the coming weeks and months. Um, but right now just know that I'm fully open to collaborating, collaborating with people. So if you have any ideas, uh, any use cases for this machine, things like that, let me know. Send an idea my way so I can you know, implement some usefulness into this machine. Uh, and if you have uh, another way to collaborate, if you have a bakery that needs to use these for cake toppers or something like that, let me know. If you have some really good materials ideas, let me know. Uh, this machine is uh, very versatile. Everything from baking to possibly wax investment casting with metals. Uh, you could do something like that. So I'm just excited to open this up to the RepRap community personally. This open source community that is, you know, very talented and can really take an idea and just run with it and do some really awesome stuff. So like I said, join up with me. Let's make something cool happen, guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in. It's been Luke Cunningham, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.